In 1979, this twin Cessna 2638 Yankee was built by Cessna Corporation with the latest technology in the world. Today, more than 40 years later, technology has improved. If you're upgrading avionics in an airplane or you simply want to know what happens, stick around and watch this episode from The Fire Pilot. Don't pull the autopilot. Don't pull the autopilot. Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. You know, there's nothing better than getting your airplane some nice, fancy new screens to help you fly. When we purchased this aircraft, we knew that we would have to further invest in order to make things safer, more reliable, and to fit our mission. It was an old panel with what's called steam gauges. Everything operates on basically air pressure. They're historically reliable, but difficult to integrate together and with the newer avionics that are available to modern aircraft. Now, we knew what we wanted. We wanted a reliable, integratable system of equipment that keeps my family and I safe and as reasonably priced as possible. Now, I wasn't married to any other brand of avionics. I was looking for what made sense. We use this aircraft for my business, but sometimes we take family trips. So we wanted companies that would treat us like family. It was time to search for screens. Now we searched for avionics for several months and we weren't just looking for the products, but we wanted companies that stood behind their products. Who wanted us as a customer and who really cared about the product that was going into our aircraft? We contacted a couple of larger companies and they'll go unnamed. They took no interest in us, what we were trying to do, and simply directed us to the support section of their website for any and all answers. That's not how I want to operate. Then we contacted a company called Aspen Avionics. We were able to work together with their technical support section to develop a systemic approach using other vendors' equipment that integrates with the flagship product from Aspen, the Evolution Flight Displays. First, we chose a new Aspen 2000 Pro Max. These two screens, known as a primary flight display and a multi-function flight display, replace the standard six-pack of instruments required to fly an aircraft. Aspen includes synthetic vision so that in the most terrible of weather conditions, you can get an idea of the terrain beneath you and in front of you. We purchased the altitude pre-select option so that we can dial in an altitude, set the climb rate on our KFC 200 autopilot, and the autopilot will stop climbing and capture that altitude once we reach it. Aspen was great to work in our selection. We found them to be responsive and helpful. They've been an amazing partner. We also added the emergency battery backup option. With this option, the installation was able to completely replace all of our old steam gauges that we were referring to earlier. You've seen the Aspens in the aircraft on our recent trips. It's not a fancy screen thing that we were after. It's true aviation accomplice. The data is in front of us when we need it and where we need it. The information that's not important is usually somewhere else on another screen. Working with Aspen afterwards makes us feel like family. And I can assure you, we would have not gotten the same support and feelings that we've got from Aspen with the other guys. Now, while we were at it, we decided to move forward with a complete graphical engine monitor. We decided that we wanted a certified engine monitor. Now, that means that we were able to remove all of our engine gauges and condense them down to only three standard sized gauges that you've seen in our previous videos. We chose Electronics International for this. There are other options out there, but I think the overall design of the EI is much cleaner. I think the technology is much better and more precise. And compared side by side to other brands, the EI has much cleaner and brighter displays. Plus, even better, they're able to deliver this to the installer two weeks. Other companies were quoting six to 10 week delivery time, not working for us. I wanted to feel like a company was a partner with us on this journey. EI made us feel like family before we purchased anything. Their tech support has answered questions and given real world advice. And when it was installed, a probe was, a probe was bad and EI warranted that probe and got it in the hands of the installers lightning fast. Both EI and Aspen are family oriented companies with pilots on staff and years of experience, these two companies were the right fit for us. 
Now that we've got these fancy screens, we had to find somebody to install them. After we chose products and manufacturers, we still had to find somebody to install it. Now our local shops are great people and they've helped before, but they struggle. They struggle a lot with staff shortages, extreme delays and lack of communication. It's pretty bad. For example, when we're searching, I contacted a major shop at a Class Charlie Airport just to our north. After texting, emailing, calling both cell phone and office phones with no response, we decided this is not a way I wanted to do business. When a company has that level of customer service before the sale, I can only imagine what happens when the aircraft arrives at their facility. And I didn't want to experience continual delay after delay of completion dates. An eight week job can easily turn into a five month nightmare. We expanded our search and we found some great folks at Muncie Aviation Company in Muncie, Indiana. Muncie Aviation has been around since 1932 when they rolled open the hangar doors for the very first time. Founded by one of the sons of the famous Ball Brothers who invented the ball glass jars, Muncie continues to be a leader in aviation and currently one of the oldest Piper aircraft dealers in the United States. We contacted Andy Smith, the avionics manager. Andy would email me at all hours of the night before the plane was dropped off, Andy had lightning fast responses and very firm answers. We knew this was the company we wanted to do business with. We dropped the twin off and the install began. Along the way, there were some surprises that we found. We expected that, but there were some surprises that have not found could have put the lives of my family and I at risk. We knew when we purchased the airplane, we had a couple of issues to work out. The awesome techs at Muncie found a leaking fuel bladder and replaced our, our auxiliary tanks and among other things, diagnosed and fixed the radar that had never worked. They replaced components piece by piece until she was restored to her glory. Perhaps the most important repair that was made was discovered by a tech at Muncie who was testing out the avionics when he detected an odor of fuel where it shouldn't have been. After tracing it down, he discovered this. This is our fuel supply line to our heater. The twin Cessnas use an actual combustion heater that creates a fire and warms the cabin air. Most planes will simply try to warm the air from the heat of the engine, but like most everything else in twin Cessna world, they use an actual combustion heater to force warm air into the cabin. This is similar to the way that a home is heated with natural gas furnace. This supply line is more than 40 years old and holds highly ignitable aviation gas from our fuel tanks and carries it to the heater. Had this fuel line ignited, a fire could have started and who knows what it could have happened. Now that's all speculation, of course, but I'm grateful for the diligence and attention to detail that Muncie puts into their work. Remember earlier when we said they fixed our Sperry radar that had never really worked? Well, there's one guy to credit for that. He's an electronics expert and he knows his stuff. Ken Tallum moved to Muncie, Indiana after college with an associate's degree in avionics. He started working for Muncie Aviation in June 1976. That's right. Ken has worked for Muncie Aviation for longer than I've been alive, more than 43 years as a bench technician specializing in radar, DME, transponder, and GPS systems. He also performs test flights for new avionics installation. Today, he'll be teaching me how to use all the cool gadgets. He wants to make sure I can get the most out of my aircraft flight tools. Ken hopped in the aircraft with me and we took it up to shoot some approaches. Okay, trim set, yep. 
It's ready, and we're going to use the GPS steering. So why don't you engage GPS steering? 3-8 Yankees ready, 3-2. Yeah, Yankee, you can uh, make a right turn southeastbound. Watch for, set, uh, watch for uh, Seminole traffic that's out here to the east, entering a right base for 3 2. If you'd rather go left, that's approved too, but you're clear for takeoff. Okay, clear to go 3 2. We'll do a right turn out. We got him on the box. We'll keep an eye for him. Okay, thank you. Two Bravo Golf, if you got the field in sight, twin sets of traffic, taking the numbers on 3 2. Be coming your way southeastbound. We have field today. We will uh, be watching the track 442 Bravo Golf. Yeah, we're going to do a right turn out. All right. Test our traffic call out. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. All right, pull four boost pumps off. Okay. Good go. Looks like being the green to me. Your flow's kicking in there, yeah. Two Bravo, Bravo Golf, runway 32, you're clear for the option. Clear for the option, Bravo Golf. Coming up. Okay. Yep. Engage the autopilot, you ready? Ready when you are. Okay, heading and autopilot. Should maintain that pitch and UPS steering is, let's go back to, <laughs> yeah, okay. I thought it would make a right turn. Go back to heading mode, make it turn that way. Yeah, the heading mode is over that way. Let's get it back over here, guy. Looks like the thing should be turning right, shouldn't it? Yep. All right, let's, oh, I see, it's trying to go left okay, back that way. Zero, I missed the rest of it. Uh, just uh, hold there on the ramp. Yeah, see the left lately. turn? Yeah. yeah. It's trying to go to the left, that's why. I got you. So we got 19 on one and 17 on the other. On the manifold? On the, oh, the fuel flow. Yeah, the right ones, the right one always did run a little richer. Huh. So I usually leaned it out a little bit. Especially on takeoff, because it goes past the red line and it starts flashing at you. Yeah, I noticed that. Marker. Oh. Marker audio. There it is. Marker audio. Okay, heard enough of that. <laughs> yeah. That's your next shred availability, your regional circle. Okay. It's about a 200 mile radius. All right, so. this, is, <laughs> this is the gospel. Yeah, that's the one driving GPS steering. Okay. So, and you can see it's doing GPS steering right now. Absolutely, yeah. Yep. And because this is our maximum bank angle, it may end up outside the turn, although it doesn't look like it's gonna be too far out. No, it's pretty good. No, it's real, really close, yeah. We'll come back and we'll do the RNAV 3 2. And I'll go GPS steering and it'll intercept. 4,600 down to 4 and 460 a minute. Okay. I always tell customers, I always tell people, if you want to know whether it's safe to go through that rain or not, make sure you can see ground clutter behind it. Okay. You know, tilt the antenna down. Okay, now we got a glide path. And now we got a needle to work with. Now when you do go approach mode, the autopilot's gonna find the course arrow first, and then it's gonna allow the wind correction angle, whatever it needs. Okay, so once we have glide path, then we can go to approach? Yep, okay. It, yep. Uh, approach. It, yeah, there you go. Now like I said, it's gonna go to the course arrow. Okay. Because that's the initial. And then if the needle's off center, it will allow the wind correction angle, it will allow the course arrow to come off. Okay. Far enough to compensate for the wind. So when when a glide when it's intercepted, which is about to, it yep, should it just a couple glides up right okay. here. Okay. So now it should start to. It's sit. going down. Right. Yep. Yeah, I should have mentioned to get slowed down a little bit earlier. Yeah. That's yeah. all right. I'll get you slowed down, good. and then we can put the gear down and dive into the glide slope. It'll couple it that way. All right. I mean, we're diving here. Two, and I have uh, traffic at okay. my uh, yeah. 11, 30, 12 o'clock high. I mean, yeah, okay. Seth, Bobby, Twin, Seth, uh, he's probably uh, going to check in shortly. Uh, you can plan land. If you guys shut up, I'll check, check in, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. We're, it's, <laughs> yeah you probably don't, don't go past. Don't pull, I mean, don't I, pull I, the autopilot. <laughs> don't pull the autopilot. Whoops. <laughs> Let go of the autopilot. 
I'm not pulling anything. You're but pulling against it and it's trimming against you. Oh, well, I was waiting for you to do something. Yeah, well, I couldn't. You were pulling against it. <laughs> and Muncie Tower 3 at Yankee. We're about six southeast inbound. Three Yankee, thank you. Straight in. Runway 32. Just report to beam the shopping mall. Helicopter traffic behind you has you in sight. And uh, he'll follow you in. He's going to go to the uh, main ramp. Just uh, report to uh, beam the shopping mall straight in. Okay, we'll call you at the mall. Three Yankee. Sorry. Autopilot engaged. All right, you, you got can't, it. You can't pull against the autopilot. Zero Yankee Bravo, what type of helicopter are you? Or a uh, Bell 230. The autopilot's so far, oh, it's so far out of trim. Yeah, I gotta trim it manually. There it goes. It got so far out of trim because you were pulling against the autopilot. Yeah. It was saying, oh, I need to trim down. I was waiting on it. I'm I sorry, you. I, yeah, I was. I you was were sorry. pulling against it, and you know, I could see the trim wheel going down and down and down, yeah. and you were pulling harder and harder. <laughs> we were already at 2,000 feet a minute, yeah, and yeah, it was wanting to go straight. Yeah, I know. Thank you, Bravo. Uh, uh, I'm off straight in 3-2. Yeah, it's okay. Pull four, three and a green. <laughs> And Yankee Bravo, as you get closer in, if you look at the uh, off your right there to the uh, general aviation ramp, they've got a pallet there with a uh, tow truck uh, by it and a golf cart sitting there. You're welcome to aim for that if you're comfortable doing so. Okay. Just let me know if you'd prefer to, to uh, sidestep over to the ramp itself. Do you want full flat? Uh, for Yankee Bravo, no, yeah, I've got the ramp in sight. Uh, I'll get a little closer. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll probably just uh, I'll air taxi over there, sidestep over there. That's fine, sir. Looks like lots of room. Three green short final. Here, uh, third land, your uh, twins are over the numbers now. Inside. Very nice. Bravo, third Very land, good. three two. Three Yankee, if you're able, make the right turn on Alpha three and uh, right on Alpha, you can cross three and two one back to the ramp. Three eight Yankee, uh, we got to do a short 180 or you want us to go to Alpha four? Uh, short 180 back is fine, sir. Ready, we'll plan that. So if the autopilot's engaged, and we're pulling on it, we're yeah. making it trim down. Sure. Yeah, the trim switch disconnects it, the red button disconnects it. So it's no big deal. Yeah. We didn't we didn't hurt anything. <laughs> okay, any other questions? I'll just uh, have to play around and learn a little bit. Yeah. You know, uh, oh, I'm sure, yeah. Thanks for getting me out of the office. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Having the partnership of four companies who want nothing more than our aircraft to be safe and reliable is an asset to have in your corner. We're truly thankful for those who have our best interest at heart. Have questions about our avionics or do you need some guidance on choosing your next upgrade? Comment below. Thinking about taking flight lessons? The first step is to go do it. Check out our swag shop over at thefirepilot.me. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok all under the Fire Pilot. We appreciate your support of our channel. I think it's time to stop talking and let's get flying. Thanks for watching. Until next time, this is the Fire Pilot. See ya. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs>